Well, hello guys. Um, it's so great to, to be with you this morning. We, we're just going to chat a little bit about this month's theme, which is worship. So the, the cornerstone uh, verse that we've been using is John 4, where Jesus meets with the woman at the well. And then she asks him this crucial question about worship. She said, um, you guys worship on this mountain. We worship on that mountain. Where should we worship? Because she now realizes she's speaking to a prophet and she wants this information. She's desiring. And we could include the entire discussion on that whole thing about just about Jesus and the woman at the well. But what we shouldn't miss is that in that very moment, Jesus makes a statement. He, he divides time. He, he brings a watershed in. He said, the time is now coming. And he says, and now is. So he takes worship away from something and he puts it into something else. He said, when the true worshipers, so there will be obviously false worshipers and true worshipers, will worship God in spirit and in truth. And so then he, he, he says, God is a spirit. Those that worship God must worship God. So the whole thing that we've moved from is that, that worship must be spiritual yeah. and worship must come with the word the yeah. word must the worship must be word based yeah. there must be something about the spirit and truth the spirit and the word so where i felt god was taking me immediately was worship moved away from temple moved away from yeah. jerusalem moved away from sabbath moved away from a priest going in so it, it took worship to another level. Worship was no longer based on geographical place, um, time, day, and, and priesthood. But it went to a place where worship now was, was personal. One-on-one, yeah. -on -one, face to face with God. Yes. And so that's where I thought we'll kick off from. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um this whole week I've been thinking about you know how God like you say he wants us to have that kind of face-to-face -face worship with him um, and in spirit and in truth and I was thinking about the scripture where it says um, in 2nd Corinthians 4 about um, the glory of like you know he's, he's you will quote that scripture about the, <laughs> oh, the, 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 the which is awesome the six, because we're yes. both, both focusing on the same thing the light of the gospel, uh, yes. the glorious light of the gospel, gospel in the face yes. of Christ Jesus. Yes. So, and I, I, I was thinking about how, you know, he wants us to have that kind of worship, that face-to-face -face worship with him. And like you say, it's not a geographical thing. It's a daily, it's a lifestyle. And But I was thinking, you know, like, what is it that sometimes keeps us? Because I think we all want that kind of worship, but sometimes there's something keeping us from that kind of worship. And... I just realized once again, um, you know, I think we so underestimate how much God loves us. And um, I was reading a scripture where, where sinners were coming to Jesus, they were flocking to Him. And I just realized, you know, if, if the sinners had that, they, they had that much compassion from Jesus that He didn't keep them away from Him. And, you know, and I just, how much God loves sinners. And, you know, like we, we are drinking coffee now um, as we are sitting here. And um, there was just this thing that I heard someone say, and it was so awesome for me, is that if we can think about someone in our lives who we would like to spend face-to-face -face time with or drink coffee with, um, there's so many people who, if you can think of one specific person, it would probably be someone you, you feel comfortable with, you feel you can just be yourself with, you know, and you can feel that there's going to be no, you're just going to receive love. There's not going to be any condemnation or anything. And, you know, if, if people can understand how much God loves them and understand if you can go to a person and feel that comfortable with them, how much more with God? How much more can't you approach God face to face that loves you a million times more and that has no condemnation? So I think the more we understand, we look at the cross, we understand the love, the more we will just naturally be in that face to face worship daily and we won't have condemnation that keeps we won't have anything that keeps us back so oh, that intimacy that, that is so awesome you've you've actually brought all of it together in first of all jesus now brought it to a place of intimacy so we we can now be face to face 
I think that's what we actually desire is intimate worship with God. And out of our intimate worship will flow a worship which goes outward because other people will experience and have the same attractiveness that they had to Jesus towards us because we're flowing in that same love. Then the situation that comes with that is this thing that if we go and look at the finished work of the cross, people want to know how. How can I get my worship up? How can I get my worship to a place? Well, it's just going back to your first love. And where did your first love take place from? From in the face of Christ Jesus, from the cross, the glorious gospel that flowed from it. So when I, when, when I understand the totality of the finished work and the absolute open arms of Jesus through the forgiveness of the cross, I am drawn to Him. We love Him because He first loved us. Once we get people back in that place, and, and, and worship is from within. Yeah. That's how I want to, want to close. We say, worship is from within. It's not something coming from outside in. It's from within flowing out. It's the heartfelt honor, respect, glory that God has placed on the inside of you now comes out in the aroma, in the fresh fragrance that you're bringing back in. Worship is still about God, but it's from us to Him because of Him. And then it just flows absolutely naturally. And then it will touch individuals as well.